Hello, my name is Mr. Abbott, and welcome to the first lesson of the argumentative writing series, Entering a Conversation. We'll be going over a couple terms today uh, that will be considered essential vocabulary. You should know claim, thesis, hook, anecdote, and background context. If you already know these terms, you're off to a good start. If you're not yet familiar with these terms, well, make sure that you pay attention when I go over them in the lesson today. And so starting off, we need to start thinking about argumentative writing as a conversation. When you're writing argumentatively, you're not really the first person who's ever gotten into this argument, right? There's been people talking about this. There's been different sides debating different things about this uh, argument. And so really you're entering into a conversation, right? A conversation that's been going on before you started writing and you're adding your voice to an established conversation. And it's important to remember this because you're not writing something new that's never been heard. You're adding new perspectives to a debate that's been going on possibly for a little while or a long time. And so a really good argumentative writing requires that you acknowledge this and you engage with the conversation that's already happening. And so who's involved really? It's gonna be you as the author, the reader as your audience, and then other viewpoints which would be experts on the topic, right? And really you're gonna be like a tour guide here. And that's why I have a picture of a tour guide. And you're gonna be leading your audience through the ruins, which is going to be your argument, right? Which is the conversation that's happening. And you're going to be showing your audience what you think is important. You're going to be making points about what it is that they think you think they should be learned and steering them away from the things that you don't need to know. But this is going to be uh, require that you know your topic. If you don't know your topic, you're going to be like a tour guide who's walking through and being like, oh yeah, here's, here's a building. It's old. Um, looks pretty run down uh, onto the next thing. Here's another building, right? There's no, there's no expertise there. And that's one of the problems that students run into is they don't really know the conversation that's going on uh, on their own topic, right? And they just have their point of view and they don't really know much of anything else. And so like a good tour guide, you need to be informed about what it is you're talking about. <laughs> And so there's a couple of people who are involved, right? Like I mentioned before, your audience is going to be here. Your, uh, the supporting voices and experts are going to be here and the opposing voices and experts are going to be here. And you're acting like the middle ground between all three of them. You're deciding what your audience will see uh, from the supporting and opposing points of view. And you need to responsibly handle both of those voices and still make your argument at the same time. What you show your audience will determine uh, how you make your argument. You might be on the side where you said, well, I'm just going to show them the supporting voices. But you need to remember that oftentimes your audience knows a little bit about the topic. And so if you only show them the supporting voices, your audience will be like, well, how come they're not talking about the other side? And they'll begin to wonder if whether or not you're trustworthy because you're only showing one side of the topic. And so let's get into writing. And so let's say you have to start a, uh, a an essay, right? Uh, we're going to be looking at how to write that introductory paragraph today. And so really the first stop is something that's called a hook, right? This is like the entrance to your essay. The hook is just an attempt to get your reader interested in the conversation. It can be an illustrating, illustrative quotation, an interesting fact or statistic, a relevant anecdote. An anecdote, if you don't know what that is, is a short story meant to uh, you know, show a point, right? And so it's a short story, typically something about the topic you're going to be talking about. Uh, you can also use a hypothetical situation, kind of a what if uh, scenario, or ask a question. But if you ask a question, make sure that question gets answered by the end of the essay, and that it has something to do with your essay. Uh, my favorite uh, bad essay I've ever written from, uh, read from a student uh, started off with, do you like tacos? Well, let me introduce you to this unrelated topic, right? It, 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 it was a question, but it had nothing to do with the essay that was being written, right? And so you want to start off with something to get your reader interested. And that's the first stop. The second stop is going to be talking about the background. And so remember, you're entering a conversation and your reader needs to know what conversation it is that you're addressing. And so what is the central question going on in this conversation? Uh, why are people debating it? Uh, why is it that one side hasn't just 
been decided? And what are the traditional viewpoints on this topic, right? And so if you were to think about like the gun control debate, right? Uh, you could say the central topic uh, in this is uh, many people in the United States question the need for individual citizens to own guns. Uh, Although it's uh, protected in the U.S. Constitution by the Second Amendment, uh, some people believe that the increase in gun violence shows the outdated uh, nature of weapons being held by individuals in society and that have more uh, downsides and dangers than they do positivities. On the other hand, many people believe that uh, weapons are necessary to protect their property from uh, government intrusion or other uh, hostile entities, right? And so you're talking about both sides explaining what they both think and why they think it. You haven't really gotten into your own point of view yet. You're just talking about the established perspectives. And once you've done that, now your reader is ready to get your claim or thesis. And your claim or thesis is really important. It works like a map for your essay. It's much. It's going to make your um, reader understand your topic if they know eventually what it is that you're trying to prove. And they're more likely just going to understand your argument if you preview it, right? And so it's like a map, right? And so your claim is like the, the plan, right? So I'm going to show them the runes by starting here, moving here, moving here. And then at the end of it, they'll understand this. But let's go a little bit more in depth in the claim or thesis. You can use these terms almost interchangeably in most scenarios. Uh, let's practice writing some of these because this might be something that uh, you might be unfamiliar with. And so what you believe in the conversation, once you enter the conversation, what you believe about that conversation or where your opinion is called your claim. Every argument starts with one, right? Some people call it a thesis. But your perspective on this conversation, what you're hoping to prove is called a claim. It's a statement that just straight out says, I believe this, although you won't technically say believe because that won't be as strong of writing. And so in order to create a claim, you need to take a stance on a topic with no definite answer, right? And so here I have uh, what's called a uh, Rorschach ink blot test. It's just a couple drops of ink put on a piece of paper, and that piece of paper is folded in half to give it the appearance of a symmetrical image. And so there's really no right or wrong answer. Everything on this paper is random, but sometimes when people look at them, they see things, right? And so if I were to make a claim on what I believe this ink blot picture is, I could say this ink blot picture is of a skull because it has eyes, teeth, and a nose, right? It's not really anything, but I'm saying it is because I'm showing what I believe about this topic. And so when we look at this complete claim, it has two parts. It has the actual claim and then the reasons. And this is something you're gonna to wanna to create every time you create a claim. The claim is what you think, the ink blot resembles a skull, and the reasons is why you believe it, right? because it has eyes, teeth, and a nose. And it's important that you have both of these before you start writing. Before you start writing any essay, you want, to, you want to know what do you think and why do you think it. Because if you can have those, then you can start making your argument. And so let's practice this a little bit. Let's take a look at uh, several ink blots here. And what I want you to do is I want you to see if you can make a complete claim based on what you think this image is, right? And so see if you can write down in your first, it's gonna be the first uh, uh, part of your assignment, is to write a claim saying what you believe this first example of an ink blot image looks like. Take a minute and write that now, write a complete claim. If you need an optional sentence starter, there's one right here. You can say the ink blot image resembles blank most because, why do you think that? Pause the video if you need to and write your first claim now. Moving on, example two. Once again, write a claim on what you believe this inkblot Im image most resembles and why. Take a minute, pause the video, and write the answer in the first assignment. Moving on. Last one, pause the video and write what you believe this ink blot image resembles most. All right, welcome back. So now take a look at those claims you wrote. And can you identify on all three, I want you to label what part is the claim, what part is the reason. Highlight 
the claim in one color and highlight the reasons in a different color. I will be looking for these to be highlighted when I go to grade this assignment. Take a minute, pause the video and do this. Okay, now let's work on uh, double checking our claims. Um, once again, if you really need to make a claim, there's a step you can do this, right? If you're having a hard time, you can always start with an I think statement, right? You can say, I think cats are better than dogs. Now, if you're writing a rough draft, putting I think is more than fine, right? Uh, but your argument is going to sound more convincing. It's going to sound less like an opinion if you immediately take out the I think. The I think can help you think of how to write a claim. So I find oftentimes students write claims more easily when they put I think to begin with. But then once you're done writing it, just take out the I think. Don't say I think cats are better than dogs. Just say cats are better than dogs. It sounds more like you're stating a fact than an opinion when you do that. And then once you have that, just add your reasons to the claim. It's one of the simplest ways to make a claim. Now, ask yourself, in all of those claims, can it be argued against? And so, for example, if you say something like, I believe the capital of California is Sacramento, you can't really argue that because it is a fact. You're going to have a hard time proving this because there's nothing to prove, right? Uh, and so some students paint themselves into a corner by making facts as their claim, right? And it's just like, well, now you don't have anything to prove because that's a proven fact. Uh, and so it's, it's going to be hard and you have to identify the difference between a fact and an opinion. But if you say instead Sacramento is the best city to live in in California, that's an opinion. That's something that would need evidence and you'd have to, it's something you can convince somebody of. The other thing you have to ask yourself about your claim is, is it precise, right? And so if you say something like, he does bad things, it's like, okay, well, who is he? What is a bad thing? What does bad mean? What is a thing, right? Uh, your reader won't read this and know what it is that you're really trying to prove. But if you were to say instead, Donald Trump repeatedly makes decisions that undermine American democracy, now that's much more specific. You know who you're talking about and what the bad things are right? Uh, that is something your reader can look at and be like, okay, now I know what's being proven in this essay. And so let's practice. And so this is going to be part of your assignment. And so what you're going to be doing is you're going to be practicing entering the conversation. And like I mentioned earlier, there, that entry to the conversation is going to have three parts. It's going to have a hook, a background on what is the conversation. So describe what conversation is happening. And then write your opinion. Once you've uh, given your reader something to get them interesting, interested, given them the background on the conversation and help them understand what conversation is taking place, and then given your perspective on the conversation, that is a complete introduction to your essay. Typically, this is done in one paragraph, although there's no reason why it needs to be done in one paragraph instead of two or three. It just depends on how you want to organize your essay. And so here's your first argument prompts. So imagine this, your school is deciding whether cell phones should be banned on campus. If passed, students would need to put their electronic devices into phone lockers at the beginning of the day. Take a stance for or against this policy. Now you might start by initially writing your claim on what you think, but something you're also gonna have to do is figure out, well, what is the conversation that's happening here, right? And uh, also how can I get somebody interested in this? And so take a minute and see if you can add those three parts. Can you start a, a claim and start an essay where you introduce the reader to the essay with a hook, give them the background information on the topic or the conversation that's happening, then give them your perspective on the topic. Go ahead and pause the video now and see if you can do this on the first um, prompt section of your assignment. Take a minute, pause the video, please. All right, welcome back. Now let's take a look at an example uh, that I wrote for this particular uh, assignment. Here, I wrote, in July 2019, the state of California passed a law giving public schools the right to prohibit personal technology in classrooms and on campus. Schools are increasingly seeing the electronic devices in students' pockets as a threat to their education and well-being. Many educators believe smartphones provide a powerful and irresistible distraction that de derails student learning. Uh, 
Phones frequently break student attention and disrupt students' ability to comprehend different materials. Students and parents, on the other hand, believe technology is not the problem in the educational system. And smartphones are a powerful tool that can assist in the education and communication. In response to call for technology control, San Juan School District proposed a ban on electronic devices on campus during school hours. This policy, while well-intentioned, will not have a positive effect on student learning because distractible students will find a new way, new form of escape. The management of technology will be costly and time-consuming, and the real cause of student underachievement decline, student achievement decline, is the caused by the increasing poverty in the United States. And so, take a look here. Can you spot where my hook is, where my uh, introduction to the conversation is, and where my claim begins? Take a minute and pause this. See if you can identify those different pieces. It's important to be able to see this in other people's writing as well as your own. I'm going to be moving on to the answer in five, four, three, two, one. And so here you can see I start off with a hook, just a fact that in, uh, interesting fact interesting in quotation marks, that in July of 2019, uh, state of California passed a law giving public schools the right. Here, I talk about what is the conversation that's happening? Why do some people believe one thing? Why do some people believe another thing? Why is it that uh, I'm writing this essay? Well, it's in response to this uh, San Juan policy. And then I give my claim, which is what I believe on the topic, where I say this policy will not have a positive effect on student learning. And then here are my reasons, right? And so this is what an introductory paragraph typically looks like. You have a hook, you enter the conversation, get your reader up to date on what the conversation is and what's happening, and then give your perspective on the conversation. And for the rest of the essay, what you're going to be doing is proving it. And so you have a couple, I want you to write a couple paragraphs just like this. Let's take a look at the topics. So here's your second uh, paragraph for argument of prop two. Your parents receive a $500 reward for a contest that you won. However, you use quite a bit of your parents' time and money to win that contest. How much of this money should go directly to you? That's your argument. And so once again, Write, act as though you were writing an essay to your parents, convincing them how much money to give you. Start off with a hook. Enter the conversation. What are the sides of this conversation? And uh, then enter your beliefs on what should happen. Pause this video, take a minute, and write your paragraph. Welcome back. Let's take a look at prompt three. Your school is considering changing the rules on school dress code. They want to establish a regular uniform that all students must wear. They are considering three options. Gender specific school outfits, a dress code of khakis and white polo shirts for all students, or no school uniforms. Argue which option they should choose. Once again, hook, the enter the conversation and explain the different sides, and then give your perspective on what the school should do. And finally, number four, the United States government is thinking about making junior and senior years of high school optional. Students would need to pass a test at the end of their sophomore year to continue their education. All students who do not pass enter job training or must find an em employment. Take a stance on this topic. So once again, enter a claim, introduce the conversation, and then give your claim on the conversation. And so part of the difficulty of this is figuring out what is the conversation? Why would schools want to stop uh, teaching students after sophomore year, right? Uh, see if you can kind of, uh, you know, either guess or do a little bit of research to find that out. But write your paragraph now. All right, welcome back. Now, one last thing you will need to do for all of these paragraphs is you will need to uh, go through and highlight. I want to see where you uh, differentiate your hook from your context and entering the conversation and your claim. Can you find all three of those in your introductory paragraphs? Now, the last thing you need to know, and this is why it's really useful to have a claim, is your claim works as your blueprint blueprint to the rest of your essay, right? So if I were to, on that last prompt, 
prompt say the United States should abolish mandatory 11th and 12th grade because it will allow students who don't plan to attend college to begin gaining work experience. It will create a focused learning environment for students who continue in high school, and it will reduce the overall expense of education in America, right? Now, what I've done here is I've actually set it up that I know what the rest of my essay is going to look like, right? So here's my claim. So my whole essay is uh, talking about that, right? The first reason why I believe that is because it will allow students who don't plan to attend college. Uh, second reason and third reason. Now those reasons uh, are going to turn into the body paragraphs of my essay. So the claim is, the whole essay is about my claim. The whole essay is going to prove that point. The body paragraphs are going to be the different reasons why I believe it. And each body paragraph will be focused on proving just that one point. And so if you've written your claim, it becomes really powerful because the rest of your uh, essay is mostly set up for you and you know what it should look like at that point. And this is why it becomes really difficult for students to write an essay before they've written their claim, because without their claim, they don't really know what they're writing. They're just writing. They're doing really what's more of called exploratory writing, where they're writing to figure out what they believe uh, to begin with, which is a way of writing, but I recommend doing a little bit more planning beforehand. And so let's take a look at our essential vocabulary. I mentioned you should know what a claim or a thesis is. You should know what a hook is. I mentioned anecdote briefly, and I uh, talked about background or context or entering the conversation. If you know what all these things are, great. You're right where you should be. If you don't know what one of these things is or you're not quite certain, you may want to review this video uh, or go back and practice the assignment a little bit more or do a little bit further research. Take this time to complete your practice assignment. If you watch this video from beginning to end and you didn't actually uh, finish the, uh, the portions that I was asking you to finish as the video was progressing, it means you need to go back and do them now. But let's go through and take a look at what your assignment should look like. Hello, now let's take a look at your first assignment for the argumentative writing piece. Uh, what we're gonna be looking for is, how, can you enter a conversation on a topic? And uh, in order to do this, you need to effectively be able to write a claim, give some background information, and then uh, give um, a hook to get somebody into the topic. And so if you scroll down the document, it looks like there's some blank space here, but if you keep going, you're going to find first there's the ink blot claims. And so when you were uh, following along with the lesson, uh, you were asked to write claims based upon what those ink blots uh, you believe they look like. If you didn't do this, you should go back and do it now. The first ink blot, write your claim here. I want to see how your claims are looking. Uh, second ink blot here and third ink blot here. Scrolling down even further, uh, we I also asked you to write those uh, introductory paragraphs where you wrote a hook, gave some background, and then wrote a claim. And actually this is labeled a little bit incorrectly, so let's change these two colors here. And so what I want you to do is I want you to write the beginning paragraph. If you were going to start writing an essay, what paragraph would you uh, write to enter the conversation? And so you're going to write a hook, give background on the conversation. If you don't know the background on the conversation, you either need to imagine it or do a little bit of research. And then finally, give your claim that introduces your perspective on the topic, right? And then once you have those, make sure you have them by labeling all three. I want to see the hook labeled in yellow, the background labeled in blue, and the claim labeled in green. And uh, you're going to do this um, for the four uh, topics I discussed in the video. Uh, should schools ban uh, electronic devices, your parents receive $500, uh, school dress code, and mandatory 11th and 12th grade years. I tried to make all of these something you'd have experience with uh, being students. And so your uh, assignment is to write four of these background or introductory paragraphs that will ease your reader into the conversation that you're having. If you have any questions on this assignment, make sure to uh, mark them down and ask me in class uh, when I'm available. Uh, good luck on the assignment, and I hope you find this 